There she is, standing proudly between the sofa and my favorite chair in the living room, a little coffee table made out of scrap alder wood, made to hold a cold beer and the TV remotes. Welcome to episode 22 of The Wood Knot Carpenter. Carpenter. Man, I have been busy. I've been working big time on the layout. I've got trains running. All the track is in. I started on some of the landscaping. I'll show you that later on in the video. Uh, what else have I been doing? I've been teaching myself how to play piano. I've been mowing about two acres of lawn twice a month, taking like 750 pounds of grass clippings to the dump every time. I finished a watercolor, I'll show you that also. So I've been really busy. But anyway, I appreciate you stopping by, taking the time to visit me. I know I haven't put out a video in a while, it's been a while, so thank you very much for stopping by. Let's go on after the shop and I'll show you how, how I put together that little table that I showed you at the beginning of the video. The project started by a visit to my firewood pile some scrap alder boards I get from the local lumber yard and selected some boards to get started with. I started by ripping the boards down to three and one quarter inches and then down to three inches my final width. Yes, my riving knife and blade protection equipment is in. Thank you very much for you guys who Reminded me it's better to be safe than sorry. I try to use it as much as possible now However, sometimes depending on what I'm doing I have to remove it as you'll see later on in the video Taking the boards down to their final width of three inches Sent all of the boards through the surface planer after cutting them down. I had just recently changed the blades and boy that surface was smooth as butter, just like having a brand new machine. I went online and found a couple of great tutorials on how to do that. Glue up was pretty straightforward, no problems with that. Had a little bit of sniping down there at the end of the board, you can see, but that came out uh, with a little bit of sanding. And only thing else I had to do was make sure I had a wood knot in the project. I glued up three sets of boards and after they dried, I just went and chose the two that I thought would work the best. Glue up of the final two sets of boards that I selected for the table. That snipe line came out real easy with a bit of sanding. To help with sanding, I cobbled together this little jig. It's an L bracket that hangs over the chop with a leather strip or a cork strip glued in place. I don't have any dog holes in my bench top yet, so this really helped me hold the board while I was sanding it down. After just a few moments of sanding, the snipe lines came right out and the surface flattened out really nice. There was a slight bow in the board, but it was barely perceptible. Uh, I didn't worry about it too much as it was pretty much flat. I used my true angle guide to draw two lines from one corner to the front. They were drawn with a 10 degree slope. I wanted the front of the table to be narrower than the back so they would fit between the chairs. I saw this design at a furniture shop and I really liked it, so I thought I would try it here at, at the house.
drew the radiuses in with an old tin can. Nothing too precise here, just kind of eyeballed it and picked a can that I thought would make a nice radius. This was the most painful part of the project, guys. And when I mean pain, I mean actual pain. Watch as I begin this cut. You see how I'm pressing down with my left hand there? And then the board began to move and then the blade grabbed it and slammed it back. That really hurt my wrist right there. I mean, it took, I'd say a good eight, nine days so I could get that wrist back without any pain. So. That was kind of scary. After wrestling through that first cut, I used that piece of board there, that 10 degree triangle of board and wedged it back against the fence of the slide and that helped me hold that at the proper angle without any danger of that board moving. But notice I'm pressing down with the heel of my hand now. I mean, for a while there, it felt like I had fractured a bone or tore some sinew or something. That was very painful. I got the idea for this sander jig off of line somewhere. I can't remember what site I was looking at, but basically it's a device to hold my belt sander. You slip the handle underneath the whole holder like that, and it sets on the shoulders of the sander, holds it very steady. The table goes in real easily. It's removable. Those horizontal wood strips hold it in the back, and it does a very good job. I was able to, uh, sand those radiuses down very effectively using this. Still working on dust control, but for now it's great. Here is the finished product. Looking pretty good so far. I used my router table to radius the top and bottom edges of the table. So right now you're looking at the bottom, the top is down and I'm putting a 1 8 inch round over bit on the corner just kind of taking it down. Once I got this side done, I Flip the board over after switching out my bit that the bottom edge received a three quarter inch round over. I would have liked to have sloped that bottom a little bit more, but that's the biggest round over bit I had, so I just went with that. Uh, the end result came out really good, I was happy with it. I took the finished board out into the sunlight so I could see how it actually came out. There was a little bit of checkering I noticed where I had to go across grain. You'll probably see it right there. But for the most part, I thought it was pretty good. A little sanding cleaned it up nicely. Next, I turned my attention to the legs and feet. So I started with two boards. Both of these are nine inches. I ended up making four of them all together. So they're two inches wide, nine inches long, and three quarters of an inch thick. And I notched them out like this. I didn't feel like putting my dado stack on. I just took my time and kind of nibbled them away until I had what I wanted. Next, I ripped the legs on the table saw. Again, I had to remove my safety equipment for this cut, so I hope you guys aren't grimacing too much, but I was really careful. Uh, each of these legs ended up being two inches wide, three quarters of an inch thick, 
and the finished boards here were about, uh, ooh, I'd say 38 inches long. I didn't use that, I cut them down to 24 inches to get the proper height for the table, but before I did that, I ran up to the surface planer just to make sure that I had a relatively smooth surface to work with to accept the stain. The foot units went together really well. They were nice and snug and tight. And for glue up, I really didn't even have to put any pressure on them as far as using the vise. What I did was just put a dollop of glue right there in the center and kind of spread it out with the fingertip and uh, snapped them together and they glued up real fine. So here they are, glue is applied and drying and looking good. Assembly was straightforward. Since these were mostly butt joints, no fancy stuff yet, I just held them, held them together with uh, uh, vices, you know, bar clamps and stuff. Here I'm experimenting a little bit because I didn't want screws down near the feet so I thought maybe I would just use some wooden dowels to help secure that joint so after I pounded them in as you can see there I just went back with my little planer and kind of nubbed those down to smooth them out and they came out really well. For the other end which is the top end I did use screws for that because I wanted that end to be a little bit more secure and I thought perhaps screws wouldn't show so much under the tabletop. For staining, I used Watco Danish oil, medium walnut. I really like using this product it soaks into the wood and it really makes the grain pop out really beautifully. It protects the wood without giving it a super slick or shiny surface. I, think, I just think it looks more natural. Another benefit I noticed is that after I saw there was a scratch or something, some kind of blemish was in the wood that I didn't want to be there, I just took a sander to it and it wasn't even totally dry. I just sanded the, the surface and got the blemish out. And then when I got through with that, I just went back to staining and it blended in perfectly. I was, there was no trace that I had sanded it and the blemish was gone and you couldn't see any difference at all in it. So it really came out really nice, I think. Assembly was super easy as I didn't even glue the legs to the bottom of the tabletop. I just eyeballed them into place using the seams of the wood as a guide. Drilled in some holes. I put four of them all together, then put some screws in there, and that was it. No muss, no fuss. So here she is standing in the garage before I moved her into the living room. Pretty good for a quick, easy project. And it serves a purpose. Anyway, fellas, that is how that project went together. Pretty easy. It took me about uh, four and a half days, maybe five days, including drying time. But it was very quick and easy. It was very re rewarding. Got my overalls on this morning because I just got back from the dump again this time with 640 pounds of yard waste so I'm getting a workout in retirement but having lots of fun. I'm going to grab the camera here in a second and give you a quick flyover of the layout pointing out some of the details and cool little things I've been working on. While that's going on I'll play for you a couple of my lessons out of the adult piano book. That should make the hairs on your arms stand up, okay? 
And then I'll show you one of my watercolors at the end of the video too. So again, guys, thank you very much for stopping by. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you next time on episode 23 of The Wood Knight Carpenter. Take care. Bye.